Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a table of contents. Now all these things that I've shown you since I've taught you about styles are all possible because we use styles. And the next thing is only possible because we use styles. So the, the thing that I'm going to do, I've just put a return in, and what I'm actually going to do is actually turn my paragraph marks on. I always want to make sure that that's not a style. Yeah, I don't want it to be heading one. And I'm actually going to put in a, a page break. So that's control enter. For those of you who are interested in knowing about page breaks, uh, lots of people actually prefer doing this method, which I've seen lots of times. <laughs> Not such a good method because you create a big gaps in your documents, so don't do that. Um, so control enter is a page break. And again, this is the, the funny reason that, or the main reason, one of the main reasons why I always have these on, because if I didn't have that on, I wouldn't know that there was even a page break there, so I could accidentally delete it. I'd go, oh, there's nothing there, I might press delete. And then all sorts of weird stuff will happen. So um, I'm going to leave that on. I'm just going to do a few returns there because I'm going to put my table, oh, not table, table of contents. <laughs> it's typing on that when people are watching you, it's really yeah. bad. <laughs> Okay, so I'm putting my cursor where I want my table of contents to be. To tell you the truth, you can put the table of contents anywhere. You could put it at the end of your document if you want it. It doesn't matter. It's wherever your cursor is. So to put it in, click on your references tab, and you'll notice that there's a lovely button there that says table of contents. And then Word has um, given you all these automatic ones, which, of course, we're not going to use. <laughs> and the reason for that is we don't want to be controlled by them. Again, we want to have that control about what our table of contents looks like. It's a bit like the list that, of styles that was as recommended. Well, I don't want to be controlled by Bill Gates. I want to do it myself. So I'm going to go here to insert table of contents. Um, now, some of these things you probably won't even want to change, but I'll just point them out. Show page numbers. Well, yes, that would be the purpose of a table of contents. Don't know why you wouldn't have that, but anyway. Uh, right in line page numbers, look, that's how we like to look at things. If I didn't have that, it would look really weird, wouldn't it? Look, that little sample, that's no good. So you would leave that. Normally it's little dots, but if you wanted to change it, you could change it there. I don't care, do whatever. This is the important bit down here. This is where you're making a change. See how if I chose to have only three levels, it would only show heading one, two, and three. But if I've used all those, if I have used six, yeah, then I want to show all. So just increase it to everything. Because if you've used them in your document, it will show. If you haven't used them, that's okay too. It just won't show. Yeah, makes sense? So you can do that here. So I click OK. And this is another bar moment, really. I'm just going to decrease that so you can really see the impressiveness of it. There it is. Wow. <laughs> and... Uh, the next thing to do is let's actually go to one of these. Now I can just control click here, and but I like I said, now that you know about the navigation pane, really, you can just do that, can't you? <laughs> so um, one of the things about the table of contents, I'll go back right back. See, in the navigation pane is quite nice too. See this thing, this one here takes you always to the top of your document. This one here. Yep. Um, what I wanted to show you here is that this is another grey area. What does grey mean? Something automatic is going to happen. There's not much point in me typing something different in here. Absolutely no point because as soon as I update the table, which I will be doing, all that will be washed away. So where do I need to make the change? I need to make it where I want to make the change. So if I go to chapter 3, which is conclusion, which is obviously wrong, um, and change it, and I might even just put in a number of page breaks just to get that on a different page. Now I'll go back to my table of contents. You will see that uh, where it says conclusion here, that has not automatically changed, has it? Yeah, so table of contents, my personal way of thinking, the only time that you would put in a table of contents is if you're ready to print it, because you're going to print it and you, you, you'll need it when you've got it printed, or when you're sending your document to someone who doesn't know how to use the navigation pane. You might like to show them because they'll be really impressed. Because really, I can navigate through my documents using this quite easily, actually much more easily than using this. So really, this is the last thing that you might do. 
Anyhow, if you, did, if you had made some changes, made some more, put some more text in, and you had your table of contents in there, then you need to update it. So you can either right click and choose update field, or my, I quite like the F9, which is really easy. Put your cursor in there and press F9. And as you can see, it changed the, um, the page numbers as well as the text. So, and why does that work? Oh, the one thing, I'm surprised nobody's, no, nobody's asked me. Um, what happens if I want to actually include things in there that are not in here? So, for example, I've got here till chapter 9. If I go right to chapter 9 right on the bottom, I can see that down here... Oh, where did it go? Oh, I must have moved it. <laughs> I must have moved my appendix. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Anyway... Um, if you want to include your appendix, even if it's not at the end, oh, there it is. <laughs> I obviously moved it. Actually, testing the skills. No, I won't. I'll just leave it. So the appendix is currently not in it. It's not listed. Yeah? Because it's not listed because it's another style that's not automatically included. So going back to my table of contents, I actually, personally speaking, I'm really for removing the table of contents and then just starting afresh, right? You can update it, but it's, it's, if you go here, it's very confusing, uh, so I don't recommend it. I would just go to um, References, remove the table of contents, and then insert a brand new one. And we, it's picked up the fact that I made that change here from before. I can add another heading or another style to be added to the table of contents by clicking on options and see there's my appendix style I can type one in now the reason I'm typing one I'll just demonstrate this see here heading one two three four five six seven eight nine that's the way they're indented in the table of contents yeah so if I choose level one it'll be the furthest to the left yeah your left my right um, so that's what that means that table of content level so if I check, say appendix level one click OK and OK, you'll see that they'll probably be in the middle somewhere, they're there in the wrong spot, but anyway, there they are, now they're included. So if you had any style, even one that you'd made up, they'll be listed there and you can put them in.